welcome. Young composers and producers may not have the keyboard skills that they wish they had, but that's no reason not to have smooth voice leading and interesting sounding chords that use suspension and prepared dissonance to energize and propel the motion of your chord sequences. So, Q logo. <laughs> Okay, so uh, here we are in a workspace, and, and uh, I'll just get a loop rolling here. Now, what I'm going to do is play a simple chord progression, four triads in a circle of C major, E minor, A minor, and F. Here we go. They're pretty, they're, they're pretty uh, blocky that way. Let's just go ahead and select them all and uh, quantize them to quarter notes. It, it's not a lovely cycle. Let's listen to it again. These chords are wonderful. But as they are, they jump around and they break a couple of really big rules of harmony. The first one being these outer voices. They're fifths and they're moving in parallel. That parallel fifth motion is not pleasant to our ears. So the very first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take a look at, at these notes and say, well, how can I make it move more smoothly? And I notice right away that this B has another B down here. And so I'm going to drag that top note down. And right away I can see that the C chord moves to the E minor chord with one tiny change. And I can do the same thing here. Um, the E is common as I move to the A minor chord. This B here could go to A, but it would leave the G up here hanging. So let's take this low A and bring it up. And now I have an A, a C, and an E. And each voice moves only by a step. The E remains, the B comes up, the G comes up. And I'm going to do the same thing with the next chord. The next chord is uh, our F chord. Well, the A can stay on the top. The E moves up to F. And this C on top, well, it could be on the bottom. Let's listen to this chord cycle now. Everything is moving smoothly. And of course, you, you got to remember that when you cycle around again, this A, this F, they have to go someplace. They're going over here to the E and the G, the C remains common. So we've got a very smooth, even flow of chords. In fact, I'll tell you what, it might be a little bit too even. So I'm gonna go looking for ways to spice this up a little bit. The very first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this tone here and extend it so that it suspends one beat into the E minor chord. And then I'm going to take this tone here and suspend it one beat into the A minor chord. Let's do the same thing here. We'll pull this back a beat. We'll extend this E. And now let's listen. up a little bit.
This would sound lovely in um, strings. It's working really nicely in piano. Let's add roots now, a little root motion to the bottom. Remember, the chord progression was C, E, A, F. I think this is just just lovely but one thing we can do and it's a fairly conventional thing to do is to look at this arrangement of notes here and say you know they're all really close together what if we grab one of the voices maybe the middle voice it's not much right you can see it's it's kind of the same thing again and again and again and move it down an octave that's bunch of E's and then up to an F. Now the voices are more open. There's more space between the notes. This kind of uh, breaking up of the chords, redistributing them, um, lengthening tones to create dissonances and leading tones, basically uh, adding interest and propulsion to your chord progression, actually suggests melody. When I listen to that, I, I hear little melodies built into it. You can get much more interesting sounds out of your favorite chord progressions by using these kinds of inversions, suspensions, and prepared dissonances. So, um, like and subscribe. I hope this was useful for you. Next week we'll take a look at how melody can come out of these things. Mm -hmm.